Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to be trying to fix this Sega Mega Drive game called Bonkers. So this was sent over to me by Mike from 1UP Gaming and basically he sent me a box full of stuff and on this one it says Bonkers, it says this won't boot, have tried reflowing, no luck. And you can see I've got it in there at the moment and there's nothing happening up on screen there, it's completely blank. If I turn it off and back on again there's still nothing happening and it doesn't matter if I wiggle it around and it looks perfectly clean so if I turn it off and show you there you can see that the contacts all look good so it's not that and my Mega Drive works absolutely fine because when I put in Golden Axe 2 and turn it on you will see now that it will boot up okay so let's get this thing taken apart and see if we can see anything obvious with it right, here we go let's have a look inside Right, that all looks lovely and clean. Let me zoom in. I can't see any signs of anything broken on that side. I can see it's been cleaned as well. Uh, right, okay, first impressions are that that all looks, that all looks fine. Let's have a look this side. So we have a capacitor, a resistor, even though it's labelled up as C2, and the, uh, the main chip here, which again, all looks lovely. Right, okay, initial initial impressions are that it's going to be a faulty chip because there's really not much to this. If, uh, if the contacts are clean and there's continuity between, for example, here and each of the pins of the chip and each of the pins of the chip here, then uh, there's not really else it can be unless it can be the capacitor or this resistor here, which I will obviously check, but I'm thinking that it might well be, I'm thinking it's going to be a problem with the chip. Let's check this capacitor and uh, capacitor and this resistor here. Bearing in mind, I don't really know what I'm talking about. Uh, 7.4 mega ohms. Does that seem a little bit? I thought that would be like ohms or in kilo ohms. And why is it reading different different ways? This, of course, is not a resistor. I mean, it is labelled up as a C2, but it looks like a resistor, doesn't it? Right, 16 volt, 47 UF. So 16 volt, 47 UF, it should be less than 1.6. Let's see what it is actually testing. Yeah, so I said it should be less than 1.6, and it is, it's only 0.64. And it says uh, for a 25 volt cap, good if less than 200 microfarad. So I'm pretty sure that that capacitor is gonna be testing okay. So what I'm gonna do is, before I go any further, I'm just gonna get my multimeter, I'm just gonna check for continuity between here and all the pins here. So I will unsolder the capacitor just to check it to see what, see if it is actually testing the 47 microfarad. This one here is confusing me at the moment. I might try to get a reading off that online to see what that, uh, to see what that actually is using the color code there because at least I can actually make out what that is. It looks quite clear, it hasn't worn off at all. But before I do any of that, let me just make sure that it's not, for example, a problem with the circuit board itself. Right, so I'm just putting my meter to continuity. It's gonna take a while, I'm just gonna go across them all, yep. Continuity wise, it's all tests and okay. So I'm gonna unsolder this and this and see if I can see anything wrong with it. Yeah, 47 microfarad, there's definitely nothing wrong with that capacitor. I'm just gonna pop this back in. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take out this resistor here, uh, just to see if it's measuring anything different out of circuit and I'm also gonna read the color code on the bands as well. That's weird, why is this not giving me any reading? Look, it's not coming up with anything. Try it the other way. Shouldn't matter on resistor anyway. That's strange. So could this uh, resistor be out of range of my meter? Or is it faulty? Thing is, I was getting a reading on here. Let me go back onto here and see if the reading was from uh, from the board, maybe. Yeah, there you go. That's the reading from the board, isn't it? I 
wonder, is that definitely a, uh, definitely a resistor? I mean, it looks like one. But it is labelled up as C2 as if it's a capacitor. Let me go to let me go to this, see if it comes up with anything this way around. Just in case it is some weird kind of... Uh... Oh, look, it is giving me a reading. Yeah, 18 nanofarad. Hmm, okay. Well, that's new to me. Capacitor looks just like a resistor, but possibly it is a capacitor then. Very strange. Well, I'm going to, uh, I might have a look in Golden Axe and see, see if that's the same or not. Well, I've been reading up about this little fella here, and yes, it is a capacitor. If I'd seen that, I would have thought that that would have to be a resistor, but it's not. And that's the reason it was giving me a weird reading when I was uh, going across it. But anyway, when I put it into this one here, if you have a look, it does come up with capacitor. It says 18.59 uh, nanofarad, I think it is. And here it says 18.25. That's the reading I got here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm sure this is absolutely fine, but I am going to just unsolder the one from the Golden Axe game, and I'm going to measure that just to see what it's like. And if it's a similar amount, I'm going to pop it in this board just to see how it performs. I'm 100% certain that the capacitor is correct. Right now, I am 99.9% .9 certain that this chip here has gone faulty. I just want to do that last... 0.1% just to make sure it's not to do with uh, this little capacitor here. Right, so this is 30 nanofarad. I'm, uh, I'm going to put it in there just to see. I'm certain that it is the big chip, but uh, I know the values are different. The other one's 18, this is 30. I'm not sure whether that's actually enough in the real world to make any difference or not. Right, I've just popped it in that way. I put it in the uh, same way that it came out of the other board. I haven't put it through the holes here. It should go this side but uh, it would be a bit of a tight fit. So I'm just doing it there. It will do exactly the same thing. But I'm just going to pop this in now, see if it makes any difference. Right, okay, unfortunately it made no difference at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the original capacitor back in because I don't believe this is faulty. And I'm going to put this one back in my Golden Axe game, make sure that's still working. And just because I've got the soldering iron out, I am just going to quickly reflow every one of these. I know Mike said he's already done it. Uh, it all looks fine, I can't see any broken joints, but I might as well quickly do it, and then I know 100% without any doubt that the chip is faulty. Clean them both up now with some uh, IPA. They're all cleaned up now. You can see it all looks absolutely, uh, absolutely immaculate. There's nothing wrong with those contacts there. There you go. Look at them. Testing okay. Testing okay. Done all the continuity. Given it a nice good clean and reflowed everything on it. So I'm going to pop it back in, and then. Uh, Pop it back in and just give it one more try. Right, let's bring it over and I can show you the disappointment. Okay, unfortunately I've come to the end of the video. It doesn't work. You can see there, there's nothing happening up on screen at all. Luckily my Golden Axe 2 still works absolutely fine. So yes, you could change the EEPROM out, that big chip, but really it's not worth doing it. So for example, I can't do it myself. If you've got the equipment, of course it's worth doing it. But let's say now if I ask Chris from Gadget UK to do this for me, by the time he's taken to program up the chip and also send it over to me, I can go down the road and I can get an unboxed example for £12 from CEX in the UK. I can actually get a boxed example for £15. So you need to think, is it worth taking all that time to program it? 
and uh, send that over to me when I can go down the road and get it for £12. Probably not. But at least I know now 100% that the chip itself is faulty and I quite enjoyed the process of elimination to prove it was the chip by eliminating everything else. So even though it's not worked at the end, I still quite enjoyed the process of doing it. So unfortunately I can't show you the working game, but if you got any enjoyment at all from the video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.